All right, what's up guys? So this video is gonna be primarily based around week one at Norfolk Southern's Conductor Training School in McDonough, Georgia. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about what to kind of expect for the first week, the general process that you're gonna be going through and all that other fun stuff. So you decided to join the railroad and you're on your way down to the training center. Your first day when you get there is probably gonna be your, I wouldn't say worst day, but the toughest day. Um, the reason why I say that is because you are just gonna be doing a lot of sitting and listening, watching welcome videos, being told about you know what's expected of you while you're on the training grounds, the rules of the training grounds, the do's and the don'ts of, of the classroom and stuff like that. You're gonna do some paperwork, uh, real minor paperwork, you're going to get all your computer login information to where you can access all the additional training stuff that you're going to be needing to get on to throughout the course. And then on top of that, you're going to be introduced to your course syllabus and go over everything that's expected of the program and all that fun stuff. Now, along your first day, you do your hang test, which is what everybody kind of gets worked up about and, and asks about. It's not that bad. You just need to do what the instructors tell you to do as far as you know how to successfully complete it just relax and just do what they say and you know you'll be fine the um the first day again because nobody really knows each other you're all kind of like strangers and everything after the first day you start to get relaxed and you start to get to know the people that you're in class with and you can get together for for dinner or lunch and go get food and stuff like that together and you can make some some good friends down here for sure the um, the following day after day one again that's going to be your longest day anyways from seven to four you're typically we were there until four o'clock your second day you're going to get more into actually being hands on they're going to go over you know do hand signals with you do all the base fundamentals read your first set of rules in the rule book start getting acclimated to all your materials that you were given uh, on the first day and you go from there i mean it's it's all it's hands-on from there first day is not so much you get a tour of the facility you get told what you're going to be doing and stuff like that but you're not really doing too much a lot of sitting and listening so throughout the rest of the week they're going to bring you outside and they're going to do um all different types of activities that just encompass all the base core values of working your job as a conductor on the railroad one of them is called the static station we have this area that's made up of just a bunch of static equipment. Um, it doesn't move, but it's there so that you can learn how to get on it properly, get off of it properly, um, lace air hoses, uh, throw switches, do your handbrakes, you have different styles of handbrakes up there. And that is what really, going through that circuit, um, is what really is gonna start getting you the base core muscle memory of doing the everyday routine of the job. Uh, for the most part, working around it, making sure that you're staying 10 feet away from the equipment, and you're looking both ways before you go somewhere and stuff like that. Because they will, um, if you, if they see you not doing it, they, they will call you out on it and be like, hey, why didn't you look both ways before you stepped out, you know, between that equipment? Or, hey, you know, you were closer than 10 feet when you were walking around the end of that car. And they'll call you out on it because it's a big safety thing. Um, they will dismiss you if you just keep on repeatedly not being able to follow the basic, you know, core safety rules. They'll dismiss you on it. The, the, the way the course is scheduled and laid out is really nice. You spend a lot of more time hands-on than you do in the classroom. Um, our lectures the first week are really only for about two hours or so, and then it's hands-on time from there. Um, you do get a pretty significant lunch break during the day. Um, our lunches were like, about an hour and a half long or so because the course is set up for 40 people where our course right now we only have six people in it which is really nice uh, so we've been able to get through things easily we don't have a lot of redos we don't have a lot of people needing to do something again and then we're done you know there, there's really nothing else to do so your first week is all going to be first shift uh, which is seven to four for a while there we were getting done earlier though which was nice. Week two, you go on the second shift. I'm going to do a video on week two, but week two, you go on second shift at night shift. You go in at four to 1 a.m. And uh, that's fun. I can tell you that much. It's nice because uh, you get to sleep in, which is great. 
So first week, again, is really just all the basics, all the core fundamentals of, of, the, of the job. You're learning about your, your brake systems, your brake tests, what types of cars the railroad has, all that kind of good stuff. And then from there, it progresses to where you're not being um, babysat, you're not having your hand held so much because you should already have these, this knowledge and these core principles down. Uh, as far as what you should be bringing with you down here for the training, before you come down, they're gonna give you an email that's gonna tell you your lodging information, all that kind of good stuff, and what you're required to bring with you um, for your training. One is gonna be boots, uh, they'll give you the requirements on, on work boots. You have to be six inches high, prefer, you know, provide good ankle support, and also have a definitive, a, a definitive heel um, of a certain height or, or bigger. No flat soles, no nothing like that. Also, they're going to tell you to bring a good pair of gloves. I have two pairs of gloves. I would strongly recommend getting two pair. When one pair gets wet, the other pair is dry. You can dry these out and use the other pair. Um, don't, you know, get something that's good and sturdy, good leather glove. Don't get anything that's going to be too bulky on your hands. Don't get a glove that's too big for your hand. Uh, get something that has good dexterity in the fingers because grabbing the mic on the radio, turning radio knobs, grabbing certain things. If you have too bulky of a glove, you'll find out the hard way um, how difficult it is to lace air hoses with bulky gloves because they're going to get pinched all the time when you're trying to lace air hoses. It's going to drive you nuts. Um, so get something that you know, gives you good range of motion with your hands. It's comfortable to grip things with and stuff like that. Also get a good pair of rain gear, at least a rain jacket. I went to Walmart and got a $30 Columbia, or no, Kohl's. I went to Kohl's and got a $30 um, rain jacket and it saves my butt because this is the wettest weather I've ever been in. I can only count on one hand how many dry days we've had. We've been out in the rain most of the time. Our first day, it was raining. We did our hang test in the rain. It is what it is. The railroad runs 365, 24-7. They don't stop for bad weather, unless it's really bad, but not so much. So expect to be out in all weather conditions, just like you would on the job. Um, as far as that, I mean, our course right now is four weeks long, so prepare to be away for a month uh, as far as clothes, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Come, come prepared. The hotel that we're in is actually fairly decent. There was a lot of talk before about not having the best hotel but actually this hotel's nice it's it's in good shape it's comfortable it's clean uh can't really complain there the biggest thing about the hotel though is you got to watch yourself if you drink you can't drink here at the hotel um don't go out and buy a six pack i mean we are surrounded by food we are surrounded by bars we are surrounded by gas stations like that you know sell alcohol the temptation is real do not go out and get a six pack or anything and bring it back to the room and drink. Because if you feel like this is a vacation and you're away from home, you're just gonna let loose, you're, you're gonna get let go quick. Um, if you're rowdy and carrying on in a hotel and, and you get complaints against you, the hotel knows who you are and they know who you work for and they know why you're here. Um, they know you work for the railroad and you're representing the railroad when you're here. And if you give the railroad a bad rep, they will call the railroad and tell them that your trainees are, you know, dicking off at the hotel and they'll dismiss you on it. Um, with the alcohol and stuff like that, you know, with Rule G, it applies to everything in Norfolk Southern. doesn't matter if it's in your car, but if it's on their property, it's, it's a big no-no. The hotel room is technically their property since they are paying for it. So that's why you can't be, uh, be drinking in the hotel room. Now, you can go out and have a drink. That's not a problem. Um, there's a bar literally within walking distance. I can hit it with a stone if I throw it hard enough from here. We'll go over, um, you know, after, after a day of class and just grab a drink or two, have a dinner and then come back to the hotel, but we're not carrying on and that's totally acceptable. So it's not that you can't drink at all. You just need to be super, super, super responsible about it. And remember what you're representing while you're here. Cause they'll see you walk out and, and back in all day with your Norfolk Southern stuff on. They know who you are and what you're doing here. So you have to keep, you know, a good public eye on that side of things. So don't come down here feeling like it's a vacation. I mean, they, they tell you like on the weekends, go explore, go do something, get out of the hotel. Because if you sit here and all you're doing is just on the books, on the books, on the books, on the books, you're going to burn yourself out hardcore. You know, on the weekend, put, put your books away and go out and do something. Like, you know, this past weekend, I went into Atlanta, um, visited some history museums, went out and did some stuff. 
Just took a nice weekend, went, went bowling, did pool, did laser tag, and you know, did that at night. Now during the day, like I studied and stuff like that, ran through, ran through some tests on the computer, did what was required for that weekend for homework and stuff like that. And then I was like, all right, let's go out and cut loose and go do something. Um, so it's totally acceptable to do that. You just need to be responsible about it. Um, other than that, week one, it's all the basics. I'll be doing, again, like I said, I'll be doing a video on week two. We're in week two right now as to what to expect. Uh, also on week one, you have a midterm that you take your first day of week two. And that is on everything that you've learned for that first week. If you don't pass it the first time, you get a chance to retest only once. If you pass that or if you fail it, um, you're done. You're sent home. We actually just lost a guy on Monday um, that didn't pass the midterm. It was kind of inevitable and it was kind of foreseeable that it wasn't going to work out. Um, but you got to give them the benefit of the doubt and, you know, let them retest. So, unfortunately, yes, you know, he, he got cut. So that's just kind of the nature of the game. And they tell you that when you come down here, if you fail to successfully pass any portion of the class, you're done. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, they can dismiss you for really anything they feel like down here. Are they going to? Unless it's severe, no. Um, everything has been very relaxed. The instructors are great. The instructors are all coming to you with industry knowledge from them actually doing the job on the ground, which is a plus. You're getting the people that do the job telling you how to do the job. You're not getting somebody in management or somebody that's just a course trainer to teach you how to do it that's never done it before. You know, That's where we uh, get the upper hand in this because we're, we're getting it right from the people that do the job themselves. And they're very straightforward about things. Um, they want you to succeed. And, you know, the instructors that we've had so far uh, have been absolutely great. You know, you ask questions. They're more than willing to, to answer them for you. They're very personable. It's not such a strict environment as so many people think it is. It's just very laid back. We're all here to do a job. We're all here to learn. And our class is doing actually very, very well for a lot of us not being prior railroaders. It's, it's nice that I have prior railroad experience coming into this because I can understand the theory. And I kind of understand when they talk about certain things a little bit more than what some of the guys that you know are fresh off the street don't have any railroad experience can. And it allows me to kind of help them a little bit and vice versa. I've learned tons of new things since I've been here. I don't know everything, but it was nice enough coming in with a little bit of knowledge um, that made a lot of this a lot easier to, to pick up and learn. They have a lot of very strict policies in their rule books. They have a lot of very strict written procedures that have to be written to or have to be followed to a T. Um, you know, even, you know, talking on the radio, there's very specific things that you're supposed to say. And if you don't say them, you can get in trouble. So uh, that's been the biggest learning curve, you know, it's just learning and, and understanding what needs to be said on the radio, when it needs to be said on the radio, why it needs to be said on the radio, stuff like that. But it's funny to look back when we first got on radio, it's probably like week three or day three of week one, we were stumbling on ourselves and we were just like, uh, but now like we were just out tonight doing some night switching. We were doing some, some brake test stuff and we were just keying up and rolling with it and, and doing it. So it's kind of amazing how it just starts to become second nature to you. But again, that's week one. It's, it's day shift, seven to four. Some days might be a little earlier now. I don't know about the next class. You can't take it with a grain of salt. So that's kind of what we've been through so far. I'm gonna be making another video on week two here in a little bit because we're about to finish week two. But again, that's, that's your week one recap. It's been great. It's been a great time. Learned a lot. Um, had a great you know time with the guys in the class. We're all awesome people. And the cool thing is, is right now our class is all the same division. So we're all going back to work at the same location. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, if you have any questions or anything or want a video on something railroad related about Norfolk Southern or uh, a Q&A video, that'd be cool. Drop it in the comments below and I'll definitely make another video for you guys. But I'll see you later for now. Stay tuned and watch out for the week two review.